Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the brand new show live here at Fox Sports 1340 and 96.9 titled Around the Bases of Birdland. I'm your host, Brian H. Waters. I'm rolling solo on the pilot episode. Um, this is a baseball show strictly for the Orioles fans. Now, we obviously encourage other people to listen, but you know, I was sitting there and I said, you know, you have basketball shows, you have football shows, you got Raven shows, you got Wizard shows, but what about the Orioles? And anybody who knows me knows that the Baltimore Orioles are a team that is absolutely my favorite team in all of professional sports. I, yes, I am a diehard Los Angeles Lakers fan. I am a diehard Baltimore Ravens and Dallas Cowboys fan, but the Orioles are the one team that I simply love more than anything, and that's except professional wrestling. Now, what you can expect on bases of Birdland, around the bases of Birdland, one of the things you can expect is straight Oriole talk, entertainment. You know, I'm, I'm, it's no secret, if you can't tell, I'm an African-American male, and I fell in love with the game of baseball. Growing up in a Catholic school, I was um, the minority, clearly, in my school, but I had the, um, baseball was the sport that they offered. It was baseball and soccer. I didn't play soccer, but I played baseball. And at that time, you know, you had a lot more African-American players. You had Ken Griffey Jr., you had Bobby Bonilla, Barry Bonds, and you had Frank Thomas. So many players that played the game that I loved. And this is the thing. I said, this was, I always wanted to be a professional baseball player didn't happen um i look at adam jones and he was what i wanted to be black guy that was the face of the orioles um so i've been blessed to i studied production i studied broadcast journalism so it's, i'm not just one of the people who um just decide to up and have a podcast no i am a graduate of morgan state university um but, you know, I was blessed with this opportunity thanks to our sports director, Glenn Thomas, who you can listen to each and every Thursday on Wrestling Marks of Excellence and him along with my brother, Corey. And you can also catch their show right here on iTunes. Um, but, you know, I was blessed with the opportunity to be able to cover the Orioles and be able to go to some of the games um, along with my good friend, Hugh Scott. Me and Hugh actually met in the sixth grade, and we came together because we were both Oriole fans. Uh, Hugh, diehard Oriole fan, um, you'll see a lot of times when you see me at the games, he's the one that's with me. He's behind the camera, so he's shooting. He's taking the photos. You can follow him at Hazmat3Photos on Twitter and Instagram. But, so, enough of that. Let's get into the show. The Baltimore Orioles are starting off very hot this year. Um, You know, they lost today to the Boston Red Sox. But it was a game where, I mean, obviously you want to win them all. They took two out of three from the series. And if you can take two out of three in every series, you can consider yourself doing well. But the Orioles, you know, they fell today. um, But they're still... You know, they're still going smooth. They're still riding high in Birdland. And simply, the fans are, you know, they're happy. This is a team that the media and the experts wrote them off. But I saw one this morning, I saw on TV, and they said, how good are the O's? One of the things that's getting done is starting pitching. You look at this team, they're 12-5. and five. Uh, They won seven of their last ten. And they have the, well, Houston passed but they had the best record in baseball. But it's getting being done by starting pitching. The offense has not got going yet, which we'll talk about later. But the expectations. So I would say my expectations is that I would see this team making a run. I could see this team going all the way. Yes, if the starting pitcher see one of the things is people wanted the Orioles to go out and make the moves. They wanted the Orioles to go out there and sign a big name. Well, you have you've been de- developing Kevin Gosman and Dylan Bundy for the past few years. I wrote a piece on Fox Sports thirteen forty AM dot com. Dylan Bundy's finally living up to the hype as we segue into our next segment. Um, you know, Bundy is absolutely, you know, phenomenal this season. Uh he's three and one and his ERA is a one is a one point three seven and we know baseball is a, a, a stat sport. He has yet to allow a home run this season. And all his games have been games in the division. 
this whole month with the exception exception of the Cincinnati Reds. The Orioles have been playing division games. So for him to be pitching this well this early against division opponents, teams that he's going to see, that has to be something that Oriole fans can smile about. So, Oriole fans, I know you have to be excited. Tweet me, what's your thoughts on Dylan Bundy? You can follow me at Brian H. Waters. All right, so, you know, the Orioles, their starting pitching is currently seventh in Major League Baseball. Remember, that was the concern. You know, everybody knows the ball, the long ball. They can hit the home runs. You have Chris Davis. You got Manny Machado. Adam Jones. Mark Trumbo. Jonathan Scope. Even J.J. Hardy went healthy. And now, I mean, these guys can all hit more than 20 home runs in a season. So, you know, we're going to segue into our next segment, and we're going to talk about Trey Mancini. But before we go there, let me make sure you know, tomorrow, or I should say Monday, whenever you get a chance to listen to this, make sure you are tuned in to FoxSports1340AM.com, where you can listen to the MC Sports Report, brought to you by Michael Bish and Cody Stewart. These guys, they talk all types of sports. Um, you know, the Capitals just advanced, so I can't wait to hear Michael's thoughts about that. Uh, you'll have Cody. He's been giving us great content on Twitter at 1340 AM Fox Sports, where he's been giving us content as far as the NFL draft is concerned. So make sure you tune into that. So, ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to Around the Bases of Birdland with Brian H. Waters. Now, Trey Mancini. Trey Mancini, I mean, he is playing phenomenal. He just, you know, came up last year late, and in his first game, he homered, and everybody got excited. You know, it's like, wow. You know, he homered. Then this year, he had a multi-home run game. And people say, all right, you know, last year, there was Joey Rickard in the beginning of the season, but Joey wasn't just hitting home runs. Joey was kind of, like, coming through in the clutch, scoring a uh, Clutch runs, making those clutch plays in the outfield. Trey Mancini, they um, said that out of his 15 career hits, eight of them have been home runs. So now you have another bat in there that can go deep. So I know fans are excited. So I want I want to know what's your thoughts on Trey Mancini. Tweet me at Brian H Waters. Tweet me also connect at 1340 AM Fox Sports. I have to know what are your thoughts, Trey Mancini. A young, up-and-coming guy. Is Trey Mancini a phenom? Is he a star in the making? Or he is he just hot right now? I want to know. Now, let's address the elephant in the room. And people may say, what is the elephant in the room? If you were watching the Orioles-Red Sox game, you saw that Manny Machado had, was thrown almost towards the head that from Matt Barnes, and no, not the NBA's Matt Barnes, even though it's kind of similar with this action. The Red Sox relief pitcher Matt Barnes threw a fastball, had to be upper 90s, towards the head of Manny Machado. And, folks, that's just a no-no. And if you remember, don't remember, Friday night, and the Orioles went over the Red Sox, Manny was going to second base. He slid. Pedroia went to make the... Um, tag but he was on the base and Manny almost well he clipped him but it wasn't on purpose and Manny even like caught him in an awkward position and afterwards he checked on him but not only did he do that he made sure he made reached out to him gave him a phone call these guys are friends you know they, they're all stars just a fraternity Major League Baseball is a fraternity just like the NFL just like the NBA so he called him up said you know I just want to check on you you know it wasn't on purpose and you know, Petroya said, no, nah, it's cool. He understood. Well, in today's game, Rodriguez, Eduardo Rodriguez, former Oriole, if you don't remember, the Orioles traded Andrew Miller. I mean, traded for Andrew Miller, but Rodriguez was involved in that trade when they, in 2014, when they went on that run, they fell short to the Kansas City Royals. But Rodriguez, towards his last, um, his last couple of batters he went to throw them inside the Manny and it just made you think like okay is this payback now anybody don't remember last year the Texas Rangers made sure they paid Jose Batista back for the incident when Batista hit a three-run 
home run in the eighth inning against the the Rangers in the uh, wild card round, and then he did the bat flip, and they took exception to that. So in his last chance at bat, they made sure they they hit him. So people said, okay, is this the same thing? Well, maybe, maybe not. But when Barnes came in, you knew that's what he came to do. And immediately, and, and I was watching the game. You know, I was watching on the local network. Let me address something. Because if you didn't see the game or you just saw some of the quotes from the major news sources, you saw, or if you got an alert, you saw it said he did words or heated exchange of words between Pedroia and Machado. That is not what happened. Machado was at first base because he, you know, he didn't get hit. It was actually a foul ball, but he was standing in first base. Pedroia was in the dugout. He looked at Manny and he said, that's not me. I apologize. That's not me. And he made sure he kept saying it. So, the story came out later. You know, they got some quotes from him. and he, He apologized. He said, look, you know, I, I don't condone that. And essentially, he threw his teammates and maybe even his manager, too, under the bus. So, Manny, um, I didn't hear what Manny said. I know Chris Davis said that, you know, they all going for one thing. Buck Show Walter wouldn't really talk about it, you know. These teams, these two teams, they're going to play each other. It will probably be down to them, too, and the Yankees. If I make my predictions, that's what I'm saying. It's going to be a, a three-way race coming to end, just like last year, except replace Toronto with New York. But, I mean, the Orioles have always been kind of like that that middle child, or if you don't want to call it the middle child, the stepchild to the Yankees and the Red Sox of being the leaders of the division. And the Orioles have kind of like taken, you know, been trying to take their respect, which Oriole fans here, they know in Baltimore, a lot of times when the Yankees and the Red Sox come to town, it's always about, okay, Yankee Stadium South or Fenway Park South. So, you know, it's it regards to what, whether you want to believe it or not, it's a rivalry. So, you know, and now that the Orioles are good, you know, after those 15 long years, now that the Orioles are good, the Yankees and the Red Sox recognize the Orioles as a rivalry. It's not just one way. So, you know, I just wanted to talk about that. You know, it's going to be very interesting to see exactly what happens as we move forward between these two teams. So, you know, the Orioles, you know, if you're an Orioles fan, let me know. What's your thoughts on this season? You know, I um, appreciate you taking the time out to listen to Around the Bases of Birdland here with Brian H. Waters, Fox Sports 1340AM.com. Um, you know, you can make sure that you um, subscribe to our iTunes channel. Uh, just like Fox Sports 1340, you know, we have uh, today, and I speak on Sunday, the um, Threes of Crowd podcast aired, and they uh, had a special guest. I'm not going to tell you who it is because I want you to listen. But, you know, they discussed the uh, NBA playoffs. Uh, Threes of Crowd with Kelsey, Ray, and, or as he's called himself, the other Ray J and my man James Hip. You know, so... Also, make sure you're tuned in. Uh, follow, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, we got some good content coming there. We also have a women's football show brought to you by one of our video editors, uh, who's also a professional women's football player, Ashley Edmondson. Um, you know, she uh, brings you four point stance where she discusses uh, just the latest happenings in um, football. So make sure you're tuned into that. Um, you know, I'm not going to hold you up too much longer. Like I said, I appreciate you taking the time out to listen. Um, you know, hopefully next week we'll have Hugh Scott here. He'll be able to talk. Or, uh, he'll he'll be able to talk Orioles baseball. He's just as passionate. Uh, but as we look forward to next week, the Orioles, well, they have the Tampa Bay Rays coming to town. Chris Archer going against Ubaldo Jimenez. And, well, Obaldo, we know how he can be. Um, I had a good friend who called him trick or treat because you wasn't sure what you were going to get simply. So make sure you know you are tuned into that. So you know that's gonna be the big matchup for the O's this week, followed by the New York Yankees at the end of the week. Orioles will travel to New York, so they wanted they they can maintain you know winning three out of every four. 
especially against these the, the division. They went to uh, New York, came here in the first week of the season. Orders were able to take two or three from them. So if they can go to New York and take two or three from them, that would be good because while Gary Sanchez is out, if you haven't seen Aaron Judge, <laughs> it's a pretty big guy right there. It's a pretty big guy. So, ladies and gentlemen, that'll be it. For Brian H. Water signing off, Fox Sports 1340. I just want to give a special shout-out to my man, Brandon Allman, for the great logo. You know, that, that's one of the best graphic designers I know. So, shout-out to everybody. Thank you for listening. So long, everybody. <laughs>